Hi, my name is Mike Datto. I'm a pathologist from Duke University Medical Center. I'm actually a molecular pathologist. Uh, but today, I'm going to uh, take a look with you at this histologic slide from the Duke University School of Medicine uh, virtual slide teaching data set. So this slide is described as a lymph node. However, even at this low power, we can see that it doesn't look like a lymph node. In fact, the normal lymph node architecture is completely effaced. A normal lymph node would have lymphoid follicles. We don't see lymphoid follicles here. A normal lymph node would have a capsule. We don't really see a capsule here. Rather, we see this big, thick, fibrous band of tissue. Uh, the subcapsular sinus is gone. So we have complete effacement of the normal lymph node architecture with uh, a process that appears to have two distinct zones. We have this pinker zone, which I already said uh, looks to me like uh, fibrous tissue, although we'll have to take a closer look and make sure it's not necrotic. Uh, but its uh, pattern and distribution makes it seem more, more like fibrosis than necrosis. And then we have these more cell-rich areas that we'll have to take a look at to see what kind of cells are there. So even from this low power, I start to get a suspicion of what this disease process may be. These big, broad bands of fibrous tissue through a lymph node invokes a, a specific low power uh, differential diagnosis. But we'll talk more about that after we take a look at higher power to make sure our low power impressions are correct. So indeed, this pink material appears to be fibrous tissue or fibrosis. Uh, we see these thick, ropey bands of collagen. Within these bands, we see small cells, which may be fibroblasts. They may be uh, capillary endothelial cells. We see some inflammatory cells, perhaps some uh, B cells, some eosinophils floating around in this fibrosis eosinophils, neutrophils, eosinophils. So we see this uh, fibrosis with sort of an admixture of, of inflammatory cells. Now let's take a look at some of these more cellular areas. Some things start jumping right off the slide at us, but uh, even from this power, we see that the, the more cellular areas are composed of a mixture of different cell types. We see some small cells and we see some very big cells. So let's take a closer look. So uh, again, sort of an admixture of different cell types. We don't see a monomorphic population of cells that we might see in some other neoplastic uh, processes of lymph node, but rather we see um, a, a mixture of different cell types. Again, we see these small cells, which are probably uh, predominantly uh, small B and T cells. Uh, we see uh, a few eosinophils scattered through here again. Uh, but we also see these large cells. And some of these cells uh, have large eosinophilic cherry red macronucleoli. Uh, some have uh, open chromatin. Some have two macronucleoli. They have irregular nuclear contours. The nuclei are very, very large. Uh, the nuclei to cytoplasmic ratio is high as well. Uh, some of the cells are binucleate, so having two nuclei. And again, it's easy to find these cells that are extremely big. You can pack maybe five little lymphocytes into there and uh, have these large uh, macronuclei. So this, this histologic appearance and the absence of the, the broad fibrous bands. But this histologic appearance alone invokes a, a relatively narrow differential dis diagnosis. So near the top of my differential is Hodgkin's lymphoma, <clears throat> or classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, also, on, and that would be top on my differential, the uh, large cells have an appearance that uh, uh, is uh, typical of what we call a Reed-Sternberg cell. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the uh, broad bands of fibrosis uh, invokes a specific type of classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, specifically nodular sclerosis classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, but we'll talk more about subtype in a little bit. Also on our differential is um, uh, T-cell rich B-cell lymphoma. So uh, these large cells could be neoplastic B cells, and uh, the background cells could be reactive T cells, and that process we call T cell rich B cell lymphoma. This process could be a diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So uh, uh, 
so a neoplastic process of, uh, of B cells. And finally on the differential would be anaplastic large cell lymphoma, that's a T cell lymphoma. Now there's a number of histologic stains, uh, immunohistochemical stains that we can throw on here uh, to help us uh, make this, uh, narrow this differential. CD30 and CD15 are two antigens that are usually present on the neoplastic cells, the Reed-Sternberg cells in Hodgkin's lymphoma. So they should be CD30 and CD15 positive. This would help distinguish from, uh, for example, a T-cell rich B-cell lymphoma where CD30 and CD15 would be negative and diffuse large B-cell lymphoma where CD15 would be negative and CD30 is usually uh, uh, negative. So to help in the differential from anaplastic large cell lymphoma, anaplastic large cell lymphoma is CD30 positive, but usually CD15 uh, uh, negative. It can show focal positivity. Anaplastic large cell lymphoma may be ALK1 positive. That's ALK1 positive. That's due to, due to a translocation between chromosomes uh, uh, 2 and 5, leading to uh, MPM1, ALK1 fusion, and subsequent overexpression of uh, ALK1, well, the ALK1 fusion protein. So that's our differential. Uh, there's a couple other stains we could throw on here. We could throw on a PAX5 stain, which would be classic in the neoplastic cells of classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, that would also be uh, positive in the T-cell rich B-cell lymphoma and DLBL. But uh, largely speaking, <clears throat> uh, CD15, CD30, a couple B-cell markers like CD20, PAX5, and uh, ALK1 or looking for the ALK1 translocation would be appropriate follow-up uh, immunohistochemical or uh, molecular studies to help distinguish these disease processes. But that's our differential. And if the staining pattern were consistent with Hodgkin's lymphoma, that is to say the staining pattern would show CD15 and CD30 positivity of these large cells as well as uh, uh, perhaps PAX5 positivity and uh, an absence of ALK1 expression. Uh, the diagnosis would most likely be made, the diagnosis would be made of uh, classic Hodg Hodgkin's lymphoma. And again, the low power uh, appearance of these broad bands of fibrosis makes this the uh, uh, nodular sclerosis uh, subtype of classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. So uh, now that we've come to our diagnosis, <clears throat> I guess we could talk a, a little bit about uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, there are two main types of stratifications for Hodgkin's lymphoma, the nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma, and then the classic Hodgkin's lymphoma. Classic Hodgkin's lymphoma can be broken down further into nodular sclerosis Hodgkin's lymphoma, lymphocyte rich Hodgkin's lymphoma, lymphocyte depleted Hodgkin's lymphoma, and mixed cellularity Hodgkin's lymphoma. I'm not gonna go into detail uh, uh, about those here, maybe at some point in the future. Um, many uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma are um, EBV positive. So the Epstein-Barr virus can be found in uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's found in the highest incidence in the mixed cellularity Hodgkin's lymphoma. And there's some speculation that EBV may be involved in the neoplasia of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, the uh, stage of Hodgkin's lymphoma is dictated by the um, uh, degree of in involvement. Uh, for example, well, I'll just do the stages really fast. Stage one is involvement of a single lymph node uh, region or lymphoid structure like spleen, thymus. <clears throat> Stage two is involvement of uh, two or more lymph node regions on the same side of the diaphragm. Uh, stage three is involvement of lymph node regions or structures on both sides of the diaphragm. Stage three is further uh, subdivided in 3-1 and 3-2. Uh, stage three, one is uh, with or without splenic, hyalur, celiac, or portal nodes. Stage three, two is uh, with uh, periaortic, iliac, or mesenteric nodes. And stage four is involvement of an extranodal site uh, uh, beyond those designated uh, above spleen, thymus, uh, and uh, uh, Waldeyer's ring. <clears throat> um, let's see. Prognosis for Hodgkin's lymphoma is uh, quite good. Uh, uh, the cure rate uh, for uh, 
nodular sclerosis, uh, classic Hodgkin's lymphoma is about 85% with uh, current therapies. So it's actually a, a very uh, curable disease. The initial response to therapy is an important predictive uh, factor. Uh, subtype is uh, less important. So there is some predictive value in the different subtypes of Hodgkin's lymphoma or the different subtype class stratifications of classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, but it's less important. I guess that begs the question of why do we subtype these? But, uh, the long and pregnant pause, it does beg the pre question of why do we subtype these, but um, you know, we subtype things sometimes because we need a name to call things. And the different uh, subtypes of Hodgkin's lymphoma can be very different in appearance, and being able to distinguish them as this is de definitely nodular sclerosis or this is definitely lymphocyte-rich can uh, aid with the ability to make a diagnosis. Um, I think that wraps it up. Hodgkin's lymphoma has a bimodal age distribution. So there is a, a peak incidence uh, earlier in life between the ages of like 15 and 30 or 35, and then another uh, uh, mode uh, later in life in the elderly. And uh, that is just about everything I know about Hodgkin's lymphoma. So again, just to recap the uh, uh, diagnostic findings here, we have a lymph node with complete effacement of the lymphoid architecture. We have broad bands of fibrosis running through the lymph node in the more cellular areas of this lymph node. We have large cells. These large cells uh, are occasionally uh, bi or multinucleate. Uh, they have uh, large macronucleoli. Uh, they are uh, in and among uh, small lymphocytes, uh, predominantly T cells. Occasionally, I forgot to mention this, occasionally these long, large cells, these uh, Reed-Sternberg cells are ringed by T cells. So there's rosetting of T cells around the larger cells. Um, the immunophenotype is CD15 positive, CD30 positive, and uh, we have our diagnosis. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed uh, this, uh, this slide.